Good evening. We begin tonight keeping him honest with President Trump retaining legal counsel and reportedly willing to fight all the way to the Supreme Court so no one can see his tax returns, which is not what he seemed to say he would do. Will you release any of your tax returns for the public to scrutinize? Well, we're working on that now. I have very big returns, as you know, and I have everything all approved and very beautiful, and we'll be working on that over the next period of time, Chuck. Absolutely. So that was in January of 2016. Tonight, we truly know that by next period of time, the president actually meant what the guy in that famous New Yorker cartoon meant. How about never, he says, is never good enough for you. Except that's not what candidate Trump said. He said he was being audited and that somehow made it impossible for him to release his returns, which is not true. And we've seen no evidence of an audit. Now, there's no law saying a candidate has to release his or her tax returns. Yet every presidential nominee since Cheryl Ford has made his taxes public in one form or another. Some like Ford only gave a summary. Some put out more years than others. But it's a custom they followed in part to reassure voters that the president of the United States would be acting in the public interest and not for private gain. Well, now the Democrats are in control of the House. They've decided they should see the president's return. So Wednesday, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee sent the IRS a request for the president's six most recent tax returns. Today, we learned the president has hired lawyers to block the move. His attorney in a letter to the Treasury Department calling it, and I'm quoting here, a transparent effort by one political party to harass an official from the other party because they dislike his politics and speech. He goes on to say, even when Ways and Means can identify some legitimate committee purpose, it cannot request tax returns and return information to punish taxpayers for their speech or politics. So that's just a part of a densely packed multi-pronged legal argument, which we'll talk about uh, more in a minute. The president also weighed in about his taxes. Nothing whatsoever. I have nothing to say about it. It's, uh, I got elected. They elected me. Now they keep going. I'm under audit. When you're under audit, you don't do it. But I'm under audit. Other people are under audit, and nobody would do it when you are going through an audit. And I always go through audits. They audit me all the time. So that's the president today making somewhat less coherent version of the explanation he first began using more than three years ago. Namely, I'd love to do it, but. As far as my return, I want to file it, except for many years, I've been audited every year, 12 years or something like that. Every year, they audit me, audit me, audit me. Nobody gets audited. I have friends that are very wealthy people. They never get audited. I get audited every year. I will absolutely give my return, but I'm being audited now for two or three years, so I can't do it until the audit is finished, obviously, and I think people would understand that. So keep in mind, he says nobody gets audited, not even his wealthy friends, but he also says he always gets audited every year for 12 years, but then he says it's actually two or three or something. In any case, he's suggesting that by being audited, that precludes showing your taxes. Again, it doesn't. Richard Nixon disclosed his taxes during an audit. On top of that, President Trump has never produced any official evidence that he is being audited, not to the public, not even to his former attorney and fixer, Michael Cohen, who was asked about it during his congressional testimony. Mr. Cohen, do you know whether... President Trump's tax returns were really under audit by the IRS in 2016. I don't know the answer. I asked for a copy of the audit uh, so that I could use it in terms of my um, <coughs> statements to the press, and I was never able to obtain one. So possibility one, there is or was an audit or audits, but the president didn't want to show one of his closest advisors the evidence of it, or possibly two, there's no audit, and the president just doesn't want to show anyone his taxes, which is understandable for a whole host of possible reasons. They could show he's worth less than he claims, or that he doesn't give much to charities, as his actions with the now-defunct Trump Foundation suggest. Or he could be engaged in some sort of shady tax schemes, the New York Times detailed in a massive investigative report last October. No, we don't know. But that's exactly the reason candidates release their returns. It's called transparency. More now on the president's determination to fight this all the way to the highest court in the land. CNN's Jim uh, Acosta joins us now from the White House. So what, yep. what, talk more about how the president is reacting to all of this. Well, you heard the president say once again, and that was a good audit of his uh, recent record on, on this question, Anderson. You know, he said once again today down at the border that he's under audit and that he has no plans 
essentially of doing this. But when we talk to people over here at the White House, I talked to one administration official earlier today who said they're prepared to take this all the way to the Supreme Court. And in the words of this uh, official, we'll see you in the year 2023. That was a reference to uh, just how long this court fight could take. Uh, this official said this is a hill and the Trump people are willing to die on it. Uh, so that's how strongly they feel about this. They feel that members of Congress have zero right, in the words of this official, uh, to see the president's tax returns and that they don't want to set a precedent for future occupants of the Oval Office. But Anderson, of course, uh, by fighting it this hard, they're, of course, perhaps setting another precedent, and that is you may never be able to dislodge a future candidate from his tax returns if he or she doesn't want to give them up. Have his attorneys been preparing for a legal fight? I mean, it's not like this was hard to predict. Right. Uh, and we were asking this question uh, at that news conference right after the midterms. Uh, the president's uh, legal team, uh, officials inside the White House, they've been seeing this coming uh, for a long time now, and they've been preparing for this eventuality for months, uh, according to the sources we're talking to. Uh, they've hired a, a legal team that specializes in this, and they're not really looking at this as so much a, a tax issue. They're looking at it as a constitutional issue. They feel like the president of the United States has a constitutional right to keep his tax returns a secret from the American people. And as we said, Anderson, they're prepared to fight it all the way to the Supreme Court. And, you know, if, if President Trump is not reelected in 2020, I know a lot of Trump people don't want to hear that. Uh, there is the possibility, if you listen to what this administration official said to me earlier today, that this court battle could go on longer than President Trump will be in office, Anderson. Uh, Jim Acosta, thanks very much. Last night in the program, New York Times White House correspondent Maggie Haberman broke the news that the president wanted priority action on confirming his pick for the IRS chief counsel. He wanted to give it higher priority than even the confirmation of the attorney general nominee, William Barr. Maggie is back tonight. Also with us is New York Times investigative reporter Suzanne Craig, who is one of three names on the byline of that uh, very impressive Trump tax story that we mentioned earlier. Former federal prosecutor and senior legal analyst Shan Wu is with us as well, and Philip Hackney, former attorney to the IRS chief counsel. Uh, Maggie, how did President Trump going from making the release of his taxes a campaign pledge at one point to a vow now fighting it all the way to the Supreme Court? I think the same way that he handles everything, Anderson, that he changes his mind about when it doesn't sound as good for him from one moment to the next. I think it is no surprise that he is not releasing his tax returns, uh, despite having said he really wants to. Uh, he has claimed they're under audit. We have no independent verification of that. We may not know that for quite some time. And what we have seen repeatedly is his legal team invoke this idea that he doesn't lose his rights as a private citizen just because he's the president. Uh, they, in, in the case of uh, obstruction of justice investigation into the president suggested that he was simply <coughs> voicing his opinions on Twitter when he did things that could touch on the investigation. They're making the same point now that as a citizen, uh, he is being penalized, their argument is, for speaking his mind politically, and this is a political attack. I think this fight could go on for a very long time, and indeed it could go all the way to the Supreme Court. Suzanne, uh, you were part of this uh, incredible reporting by the New York Times, a broad investigation of the president's uh, tax <laughs> history. Um, in terms of what you learned, does it give you any indication of why he would be reluctant to release his, his returns? I think the bottom line is he's reluctant to release it because he does have something to hide. There's something there that he doesn't want us to see or he would. There's a lot of things that you can think about. You can think about if we were to get his schedules, <laughs> you would find things like what, where are the origins of his income, where are they coming from, both his businesses and, and which businesses, but also which countries they're coming from. I mean, there's, a, there's a lot that could be in there that he doesn't want us to see, and he's now a public official with a business and, and the hidden hand is in there somewhere. But you've made the point that, that tax returns often are kind of the, the, the person making their best case to the U.S. government. It's not as if there's yeah. a line that says this is where we're committing fraud. No, there's not. And I think they're a starting point, but I think there is a lot packed into tax returns that you can see. We did an investigation in 2018 and we learned a lot from, we had in that case, a lot of Fred Trump's, his father's tax returns. And you could see where his money was coming from. In that case, he was a pretty steady Eddie guy out in Queens right. and, and, and you know, doing a lot of building and had, it, it, it was fairly predictable. But that was just, that was also, you know, I, I think an important data point. And, and with Donald Trump, we just don't know where that income is coming from. Is it, is it foreign? Is it, you know, he's had a lot of iterations in his career, be it, you know, failed casino guy, TV personality. Now he's, you know, involved in golf courses and other, you know, resort stuff. Also, is there foreign income in there? I think a lot of it, what we're going to see from the schedules and, and the sort of back documents um, that we haven't so far seen, there's been pages here and there that have come out 
is the you know is, it's going to be where exactly is that revenue coming from? Yeah, uh, Phil. I mean, what happens now? The Ways and Means Committee wants the president's tax returns. The president's attorneys say no, they're going to fight it. Yeah. So um, according to the code, uh, they should provide the returns. Uh, the IRS no should turn question them about over. It. Yeah. No question about it. The uh, the statute says uh, they shall return them over. There is no aspect that uh, the Ways and Means Committee needs to bring forward to show any proof that they have a right to them. Um, I think there's good case that uh, the committee does have a right to them, uh, given the reporting uh, done that you just discussed uh, regarding the New York Times, um, but also the concerns regarding Russia. Um, so I, th I think there's plenty of good reason for them to get it, but there is nothing on the face of the statute that requires any showing.